boost the gain up a little bit so we can okay. get cool. a decent get a decent signal even though we're not like right on the microphone. Because it'll be very boomy. I do yeah. have a mic check joke. Yeah. Do you have you a may, mic you, check joke? You may have heard it. No. Okay. Pop. Popsicles. Ice. Icicles. Test. Testing. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> You never heard that one? That I, think I, I think I've I've never heard, heard that one. I don't know. Have, have I never heard that one? You, you know welcome. what I'm doing next to the Yeah, next you got to do it. You got to do it. Because you <laughs> never say anything dirty. That's a great mic. You check make right? them think the dirty thing. <laughs> right. So, yeah. thank you for starting off this podcast, Nate. Ta da. Nate Marsh. Hi, That's everybody. how we start it. Yep. My, my bass mm. teacher and friend. And vocal student. One, That's right. Former That's vocal right. student. Maybe sometime again. We'll see. Yeah. 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 If, if, and, if we need it. Uh, and monster bass player, big playing all over the place. Didn't ever see him. I was just saying off mic before we started, uh, you just recently wrote a master's thesis. Am I saying Ma that right? Yep. I just got my master's in May and I wrote a thesis paper, yeah. um, on, which is free online. And I, and I was telling Nate that uh, I started going through it. I saw when you posted on Facebook and downloaded it and it's, it's genius. It's brilliant. It's, it's great. It's, it's uh, well, uh, Motown bass yeah. lines, jazz influence it's, on Motown bass lines. Yeah. I think it's the influence of jazz on R and B electric bass or maybe just R and B bass. But anyway, from 1960 to 1980, roughly. Yeah. And as we were saying, that stuff yeah. is so foundational to like everything else. Like I'm not, really a bass player, mm -hmm. but just even as a producer, like I want to know better how some of that stuff works. Yeah, for you, sure. You know, just to, to know what's happening when you hear that sound. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, um, it focuses, it, it, it is kind of like an in the weeds academic thing, but it's also about really, it's about why the songs, you know, ain't no mountain high enough. And I wish by Stevie wonder and, um, uh, et cetera, like why all these hit songs sound so good in the bass part and what, you know, the way that upright jazz, upright bass jazz players influenced that and right. how, how that all leads to just a song that sounds really good and makes you dance basically. Yeah. 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 Well, it's so easy to forget to how close that classic R and B stuff was to the era where it was jazz groups with upright basses. I mean, those were in, yeah, you know, the same guy's careers sometimes where, you know, exactly. They started, you know, upright bass and an acoustic jazz club. And then like, you know, 20, 30 years into their career, they're playing with Stevie Wonder. Theoretically. Yeah. You know, not that literally no, that's it. did and, that. But, well, you know. I mean like James Jamerson, who's on my girl, ain't no mountain high enough. Right. Awesome. Shop around all that stuff. He started playing jazz and R and B upright bass. And then all the people he recorded with, at Motown Studios in Detroit, they would do like a pop session, then have lunch, then do another pop session, you know, cranking out these hits in like a right. couple takes. And then that night they would go to the jazz club and play jazz all night. And then the next day they'd be like, hey, that thing we did at the jazz club, let's throw that into this tune and that'll be the intro. Oh, wow. I mean, it so was cool. like, you're, yeah, you're totally yeah. right the, about the, like the cross pollination. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I need to be more on the mic. I think you guys are being a little more on the mic than me. Although I love yeah. creating editing work for you. So there is that. <laughs> you create lots of it with all your ums. Um, well, before I forget, I just want to say thank you guys for having me. This oh, is like a real th pleasure. Thank you for coming <laughs> over. It's my first time over. being on a podcast ever. It's kind of <laughs> cool. A, you yeah. know, I've become a fan of the podcast and you guys were really kind to give me a shout out um, when I was going through some hard times earlier this summer. Really appreciate that. And um and then, yeah, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, I think you were like, man, we just want guests. Anybody come on here. We're like, like, hello, I'll hello. Oh, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So, that's so cool. Yeah. I'm a fan. I, I listen to every episode. So <laughs> It's funny. That's I, so wild. I have started to listen to them myself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I, I mean, of course, I throw them out there. I've edited them, so I've heard them start to finish. Yeah, we, we, you know, we record them, and then I edit them, and then I upload them, so I'm pretty familiar. But one day, for some reason, I started playing these podcasts, and I couldn't stop listening to them. I was like, this is actually really fun to listen to. I, I think part of it is that for musicians, I was saying in one of the other podcasts, um, like I'm really getting into the, the hang. Yeah. And like, that's the thing that like playing music is the most fun, but just slightly less fun is talking about 
music and, and doing musician stuff and just kind of the life. And, uh, I mean, you know, you're backstage a lot or whatever, you know, like you don't always talk about music, music, but you're just talking about like what, and yeah. it's so fun to like, just kind of talk about what everybody, um, yeah, well not, not all gigs are created equal. Some gigs, the music is not the most fun part. Right. You well, just that, get, to be fair, you that's get, very true. Hopefully it is, but yeah. if you could just got to get through it, but if you have, you know, your buddies with you, then that could be the best part of the gig. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We had a great dinner together or we survived together. Right. Let's talk yeah. about it. You yeah. Know? yeah. 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 You I said know. you had a, a gig story from maybe this past week or so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Yeah. So this is an exceptional story. Um, I posted this story in the gigs from hell Facebook group. That's, I'm going to have to go find that. That's how group. Yeah. exceptional <laughs> it is. And it's a great group. You will love it. All right. Well, I know you guys had that episode with your friend, uh, Ray, Ray, Ray Lynn, Lynn. Ray Lynn yeah. where you were t- just, uh, that was my favorite episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gig stories. So I thought I would come with one. So, Oh man. Um, this is a, a gig story. I don't want to spoil the ending. Okay. So, um, I was contacted by a friend of a friend, we'll say, um, about performing at his wedding. I play at a lot of private events, especially weddings. And I was contacted about playing at this guy's wedding, maybe in 2019 or early 2020 pre COVID. Right. Right. Um, he lives in the UK and they were going to have some sort of ceremony here. And I'm not going to name names. Uh, but anyway, uh, he had to reschedule many times. And by the time reschedule the wedding, uh, yes, like the, oh. the ceremony because of COVID. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, my wife and I had to reschedule our wedding too because oh, of COVID. Right. Yeah, 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 right, right. And then I think he was dealing with international stuff and and all of that. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, I contact him a couple months out. So it was over Labor Day weekend. Was his what his actual thing in Evergreen? And I contacted him in maybe in July about doing the gig in September. I'm like, is it still on? you know, what's going on and our mutual friends. So the people I know him through and then whoever else was going to lead the gig, none of them can do it. So I'm just like, he has a bass player. That's all he's got for the day. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I don't really have to do this gig. If you want to get a DJ or something, it's fine. And he was like, no, no, can you call people? Do you know people? Can you put this together? And I was like, well, I guess you're my friend. You know, I'm thinking like, oh, you're my buddy's buddy. All right. All right. Yeah. Come yeah. to find out. He's not really my buddy's buddy. He's just some dude whatever. <laughs> it's, my friend like didn't want to do the gig. And the guy, I think he never intended anything difficult, but I don't really know how to be like, uh, like a, a producer of events or like a salesman. Like that's like a thing I have barely done just a few times just for friends. But, um, I promise this is all going somewhere, but basically <laughs> I just, I, I had to negotiate with him on everything and I called the musicians and I'm like, don't worry, I'll do it for the buddy rate. And then it just got to be a lot, a lot of work. He was yeah. not easy to deal with cause he's never done this before. And I'm new to this side of it. And, um, anyway, we get to the week of things have been difficult and I'm, my spidey sense is tingling. So I'm like, okay, will you do me a favor and like sign a contract and pay us a deposit just to make sure this gig is solid. So he does. Um, and which, is, which is smart. That's very yes. smart. Yes. Talking, yes. Uh, everyone should Golden do that. If you're booking exactly a private that. gig, yeah, you yeah. should yeah. definitely do that. Yeah. Because, and now I can get to the punchline. <laughs> so, so he waited to sign the contract. So the, the date we had discussed and the date on the contract was September 4th. He waited to sign it until September 2nd. Okay, so you would assume he's going to go through with it, because why... Yeah, so, but I'm like, I had to kind of tell him, like, none of us are going to get in our cars and play this gig unless, you know, we get the contract and the deposit. It's just like, this is just what we need. So he's like, okay, no problem, no problem. So he did it, and I'm like, great. You know, two days out, you had me nervous, but it's fine. We're going to be okay. So then, (laughs) Saturday, September 3rd, I'm at a different wedding gig. I come off the first set, I turn my phone back on, Message after message. Where are you? You were supposed to be here before no, the no, ceremony. No, that is not what I thought. And <laughs> this guy, this poor guy, he said he's been very stressed and all this stuff. Oh. He told me the wrong date from the beginning, reconfirmed the wrong date many times, and then on September 2nd, signed a contract for September 4th when it was actually September 3rd. Oh, my For God. his own oh. wedding ceremony. And then called being like, where are you? And to his credit, as soon as 
so I couldn't get a hold of him because he was busy being the groom at his own wedding. But I did call I did call the venue right away and they picked up luckily and they were like, Yeah, he's here, they're having a party. Are you guys coming? I was like, No, that's not we're not contracted for it. They're like, Oh. <laughs> um and so I don't know what they did. I, I do feel bad for the guy. He was actually extremely gracious as soon as he got back to me the next day. Oh, he that's was like so lucky though. He was just yeah. he was just like it looks like I messed up the date. I am so sorry. Please pass on my apologies to the band and wow. so on. And so wow. On, you know? And I did tell him, I, I think I did a decent job of saying I was not a jerk to him. I was just like, if you look at our communication, we only ever said Sunday, September 4th. Since, you know, we can't honor, like we can't do it tomorrow because you don't have the venue tomorrow. Everyone's going to get paid out of that deposit. So basically everybody got paid half to stay home. Which is an okay ending to the story. Yeah, right. it's, it's actually not, it's not what anybody him. wanted. No, no, no. no. Yeah. And, that, and that's why uh, you take yeah. a deposit. <laughs> yeah. Which is what I was talking to to Eric about today. Um, he he's he's starting to get more. Um, I don't know if you know Eric Golden. He does. He's a, a um, I don't think so. A country no. guy um, does like honky tonk classic country, like Bakersfield country stuff. Cool. Um, he's been super busy. The guy gigs like. A, a maniac like um nice uh he does um oh he told me today in 2021 he did 175 gigs oh my gosh yes That's because he, <laughs> his advantage is is he plays guitar and sings so he can do solo gigs uh-huh. he can do duo gigs if you have the budget for the full band you, you get the full band it's like so he can book a bunch of different yeah scenarios um which guys like you and me that are you know side guys and players like we we can't do a solo thing you know no. uh not as much um but yeah uh he he's starting to do more private events and 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 has run into the yeah you know yeah the um, only thing i could have done different which i i couldn't have fathomed that this was necessary but you know when you're dealing with clients in any business where you're dealing with clients like this is something you have to do like i should have said every in every communication not just some of them Sunday, September 4th, 2022. That's like a the great whole lesson. Thing. That's a great lesson. Like, because yeah. I would be like 9 4, Sunday 9 4. Sometimes I'd just say the 4th or I'd just say the day. Right. And it's like the professional thing to do is like give it, but I mean, it's still not my fault. Yeah, like, no. I gave him a contract <laughs> and he and signed that, it. Oh. That just. But I can only imagine <laughs> your stomach dropping when you got the first message of like, because oh of course God. you would. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah. your first thought would be like, what did, did I, I fuck I, up? The yeah. first thing I did was double check that contract, but I kind of, I kind of knew. Yeah, that right. I, but yeah, but, but I did double check, triple check. And oh my gosh, I do feel bad. I hope his marriage is going well. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully everyone in that room has great perspective. You know, yeah. the, thing I, the thing I said to him, which I also said to my wife, after our wedding was rescheduled and stuff was like, it's way better to have a problematic wedding and a great marriage than the other way around. Actually, there is a saying about that, that, <laughs> yeah? that the better the wedding, the shorter the marriage. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh, cause uh, we had a great one. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. No, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's probably cool. avoiding having one at all. I, I, there were some, <laughs> hey, it's okay. There were some problems. So, yes. so, yes. there you go, so there you go. No, I think it's, it's a little more, that's not the exact saying. The saying is something about like, maybe, maybe actually I'm wrong. It's the more expensive, the wedding, the shorter, that's the, it. yeah, the, the shorter yeah. the marriage. That's probably true. <laughs> Which is yeah. true because I went to a wedding one time that cost over a million dollars. I mean, it was like a ridiculous, like, mm-hmm. And the marriage lasted less than six months, <laughs> which for the person who paid for the million dollars, I can't imagine they felt great about that purchase. Yeah. Um, Sometimes when I play wedding gigs, uh, we'll say like, well, that this person's next wedding will do, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because we can just see that's a good the vibe is. <laughs> yeah. We'll be oh like, that's right, we'll get another chance at this one. Oh, uh, it's so interesting that you yeah. can tell so far in advance. Just, I mean, you know, some of it's I mean, being not dark for sure, but and salty, but some of it yeah. is sometimes some you can't. Yeah, you yeah. can see like these people aren't yeah. even treating each other nicely and uh, they're getting married today. Occasionally you see people on their wedding day who are determined not to enjoy it. Huh. Uh Bridezilla, Grimzilla, whatever uh-huh. you want to call it. I've seen I I we good can amount. get into that. Yeah, you've seen a lot more yeah. than I have. Honestly, that is why I do not do wedding gigs, is mm-hmm. because for whatever I can't I can't deal with it, the energy. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like I mean, 
I, yeah. It's not like I do none. I occasionally they come up and it's fine, but I can't do many because I've had that same experience. And like, dude, it's just like I can't. It's 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 I'm just intense. You. Even I, if I don't personally get yelled at, I see it happening. Okay, yeah. you know, yeah. I was gonna say like for me, if I can show up, play bass, and stay out of the way. Right. I'm happy to do it, but uh, this thing where I'm interfacing with the clients is like, unless they're like good friends of mine, right? Because I've had great experiences with that. But, sure, um, sure, sure. But yeah, that yeah, it it it's just the especially energy. the expensive ones where they're paying good money for the band. Yeah, sometimes there's real problems there. Yeah, I know. And yeah. if something does go wrong, I like take it home with me, in a way that I don't take mm. stuff home from other gigs, and it's just not worth it to me to feel bad for days after a gig because like. There was a crummy vibe or maybe just the band wasn't very good, but we were getting paid really well. And you're like, ugh, like this was their special event and we yeah. sucked. And like, it's just like, now I'm going to feel bad for a week. And I just, you know, but that's probably just me being a baby. But, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's you being a baby. I would say yeah. it's you being like, not jaded. <laughs> like that's like, a good point. Like still caring a lot. And that's it is one of those things where you get exposed to it a lot and you start to be like, Ben had some mistakes yeah, there were some it, cross wires. This thing went wrong. Somebody dropped a ice sculpture. Whatever. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, as they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, yeah. like I, there was one time where it was like a big fancy mirror that had everyone's table assignments, and it. I showed up for sound check, and it was already broken on the ground. Oh and, no! Yeah, yeah. So like, it's just it just if anyone is planning any kind of event, wedding, anything, something will go wrong. You can count on it. Yeah, of hope, you hope it's something minor, but like you have to embrace that's just part of. Yeah, you know, I don't know. But b- before I forget, yeah, uh, I don't want this. Like, I want your listeners to still hear about your guys' week, and I'm curious oh. <laughs> as a listener <laughs> no, no, how no, your no. week was. No, no, no. But we, we heard about that gig. How yeah. was your week other than that? How was my week other than that? Um, it was a cool week. Um, so my wife just started her job uh, at a law firm. Um, she just graduated from law school. She's oh, wow. at the bar, and she is getting her bar results next month, but the firm's already hired her. Very smart choice, because she's the best. I'm um, sure. But yeah, so we're, we're adjusting to that. And What like, kind of law is she specializing in? Um, natural resources law. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Wow. Wow, great. So uh, And unfortunately, it's going to turn out to be a good field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, water use, land yeah. use, yeah, gas, yeah. all kinds of things. Anyway, I'm super proud of her. Yeah, of um, course. So trying to support her for that. Um, just enjoying the heck out of our puppy, who is 10 months old. Percy the dog, she's the best. And then I had a couple of cool gigs. I played a wedding in Aspen um, that was like, one of those ones where you get on the gondola and you go up to the top of the mountain and we were up there till after midnight, which was a long day, but it was really beautiful up there. Yeah. We, mm. have you done a gondola gig? No, but we I ran into, I no, I've never done one of the, I couldn't do one of those. My fear of heights. Is like, <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, I, couldn't yeah. do it. I couldn't do it. That's, um, <laughs> that gondola ride down in the dark by yourself is not, not <laughs> oh, the easiest. Yeah, weird. I literally yeah. couldn't do that. Yeah, oh no, I, I did one at Keystone once we were providing our own sound too. So that was fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, putting the sound up? Yeah. Oh, was it the one where you have to do two? Because Keystone, Keystone has one where you take a gondola, I unload, get on another gondola, yes. and then go. Yeah. Oh, and that, it was not in the summer I've either. It was in one. the winter. And I helped them load the sound in for that oh. one and the drums. Oh, my God. I would I would just have to quit playing music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just not going to be able to play music anymore. It's intense. <laughs> like, this this wedding was at, I think it was the t- Sun Deck in Aspen, which is at like 11,200 feet. So Oh, I bet it's gorgeous, though. It's gorgeous. But like, uh, I think the first time I ever played there, I loaded in my amp and I stood up and I almost passed out. So now, yeah. I, now I'm really good about hydrating and all that stuff, but you still feel it sometimes. Like right. you've been sitting down on a break, you stand up, you're like, let's go. Oh, yeah. you get a little yeah. woozy. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I did that. And then, um, man, uh, this band I play with, Morning Bear, who's, it's my friend John Runnels music. Okay. I don't know. Um, yeah. Really great great band we've played red rocks and ums and all kinds of stuff we oh, did wow. like a film on the rock set yeah um, i think he's he might super... write with jenny shawhan i think they've written maybe a song he knows a together. lot of people in denver okay. as, as i mean i'll tell this mini story which is that he's one of my really good friends uh great songwriter i love playing in his band he got this gig for us playing at the flock party which is like the zoos the denver zoo after hours party um, oh and yeah. they have live music and uh we had Almost none of our usual lineup. It was like me, him, our violinists, 
and then a bunch of subs. But then he got COVID the day before. So we had to get a different singer on very short notice for a Saturday in September, which is really hard because everyone's playing. Because everyone's playing. Yeah. And we were really lucky and we got to play with Megan Burt, who she's incredible. She's Mm -hmm. incredible. And I, this is how I met her. And I could tell that we were both like everyone in the band was like super nervous about how this gig had, uh, shambled to the finish totally line. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we ha- barely have anyone we're used to, and we're all playing covers. And like, we had to, we did like, she tried to do as much of his set list as possible while still doing her stuff that she sounds good on. Right. And I think we really pulled it out of the bag, and it was great. But it was like a, a it was stressful going in. I was like making charts in the car, like <laughs> right before the set, and you I, know, it's, it's and and. I bet Megan was great. She really I mean, was. She yeah. is like a stone cold killer. She just is like, yep. I, I things are going to be great. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> what did we do? We did the Gothic with her. Was it the Gothic? Uh, that she, she helped out at, at one of our shows. Yeah. When we headlined the Gothic. The yeah. One time. Um, I think I needed a, another keyboard player for something. Oh, she played keys. And I just posted oh, cool. on Facebook and That's she awesome. volunteered to play keys. Yeah. And yeah. I know she played keys because she's great at guitar and yeah. singing. And <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, she played she played nice. auxiliary uh, keys and yeah. Um, yeah, it was just yeah, she's just. I was I, so honored that she responded. Yeah. Oh, I was like I was like Megan mm. knows who I am. What? No. <laughs> and 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 yeah, from what I see, like building up, you know, just more and more of a career. That's so great. You got to do a gig with her. Though. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, really cool she's and really awesome. And I, I know John appreciated it. And uh, yeah. I mean, his music is really is really beautiful. He does a great job, and yeah, um, I'll let you know when we have another show coming up. Yeah, yeah. please do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe I hadn't. He even doesn't even always heard have that play with full band, but um, I'm lucky that he calls me when he does. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd what? Love to see it. So, what I was gonna say, I was mm-hmm. gonna ask who you do weddings with because we ran into, we were with Patty Nix in the mountains somewhere really recently. Where oh, were we? yeah, yeah. We were in steamboat. Steamboat. Yeah. We ran and into Chris Beck. Chris Beck. Oh. And Kerwin <laughs> Brown hotel. was on the gig. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and yeah, there's not that many hotels in Steamboat, so that tends to <laughs> yeah, happen, yeah, yeah. especially at that musician price we, point. We were just <laughs> doing our, like, yeah, we were just doing our, like, hanging out in the lobby after the show right. uh, thing, and, and here these guys come in, and they'd just gotten off of Gondola uh-huh. wedding. Um, and, in Steamboat, nice. Yeah, in Steamboat, yeah, and they were telling us about it. Um, but it was just funny to see like Chris Beck and Kerwin like walk into the hotel. You're like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> that does happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I, my, my main money maker has been private events again, which more than half are usually weddings. Um, uh-huh. but you know, it can include corporate. anniversary parties, corporate events, yeah, yeah, bar mitzvahs, whatever. Um, but, uh, usually weddings and I've played with a variety of bands. I've been lucky to have a lot of different cool experiences. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I am like backing off of them a little bit, but also still enjoying it when it's right. And so I'm playing mostly with diamond empire because they're on like okay. a, a gig by gig basis. Right. So I can be like, I don't want to do that that weekend. I want to do this instead. Um, but in the past I've been in uh, syndicate and Tunisia and I've subbed with soul X and with raising Kane And so I played with a, a variety of these, which, event which bands. by the way is, uh, that's a that's a big list of names in the in the Denver. Oh, well. You know, um, yeah, those are those are a lot. It's of all the just names. like people I know and work with, so it doesn't feel. Oh yeah, you know, totally. from inside it just. I know it's that's just like, the way yeah, it goes. Yeah, 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 totally. But uh, yeah, but it is it is fascinating. I'll talk to people and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, we had a band at our wedding," and I'll be like, "Oh really? Uh, who was it?" And they'll be like, "Oh, it was like Diamond something," <laughs> and I'll be like, "Do you remember who was there?" And they'll be like, "Yeah, it was like this, like." Uh, I remember one time it was like, it was this like short Filipino woman who was like incredible at keyboard. I'm like, that's my friend Olivia. <laughs> and you know, then this guy is singing. I'm like, that's my friend Joe. And like, it was like, turns out like a bunch of my friends played their wedding. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, so, of co- uh, yeah. Of course you would know Joe Mondragon. Um, well, I was thinking of Joe Sanford, but I'm, I'm, I'm friends with Joe Mondragon as well. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's like a small world. And the cool thing about playing for diamond empire is that it's this big, big roster. Mm-hmm. And like, you also kind of like don't know if you're going to gel with every musician, but I enjoy the project of trying to gel with every musician, being prepared. I love that. And trying to get along with everybody and make everybody sound good, especially as a bass player. Right. And so for me, it's like an asset because every time I go to a gig, I'm networking. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and, right. uh, and sometimes it's like, hi, nice to meet you networking. And other times it's like, like with Chris Beck, I'm like, Hey buddy, how's it going? How's your wife? You know, yeah, you got yeah, like a yeah, second yeah. kid coming and, and, uh, we'll just, yeah. So yeah, yeah, no, that's so, um, it's crossed my mind to try to join diamond empire t- for the networking but then I'm like, nah, I know enough people in Diamond Empire. If I need a musician, I'll just contact some friends and just ask them for recommendations. Because yeah, I don't really yeah. want to add a bunch of wedding gigs to my schedule either, for, kind of partly for the same reason that you yeah. do. I mean, I did weddings for a couple years, and we still do, still do them once in a while. But I feel stressed, too. I feel that pressure of, like, this needs to be – I feel like it needs to be perfect. It doesn't, but I feel like it, you know. It's, it's interesting. It's somewhere between – it's not a polished show when you play with those guys – but it, sometimes it's better because it's like yeah, people right. are the energy people is people are right. alive. People, right. If yeah. people are listening to each other, like what's this person doing on this right. song? Mm-hmm. How can I make it work? So there is a bit of that like almost jam sessiony. Yeah, the right. good part of a jam session. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. not the we all <laughs> had a different idea of the form <laughs> or something, which I've of course dealt with. So yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we uh, just did a gig on was it Saturday night? Yeah, tell with, me about your with week. Jenny. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> What was that? That was uh, I, I, I was using a funny voice for "Let's Do Our Week." Oh, <laughs> well, let's do it! I tried to do a joke, and then I took it the opposite of a joke. <laughs> well, tell me about your week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good podcasting. Um. Uh, we did a gig with Jenny Shawhan, and let's see. Originally, it was going to be a trio. I played with her before on bass, so bass and drums, and then she's on guitar and voice. Right. And then a couple weeks out from the gig, the country club turned this from a trio background event sort of thing to a Woodstock party that they were going to have outdoors. It was going to be, you know, all Woodstock themed. Costumes. People, yeah. You uh, went from yeah. wallpaper to Woodstock? Yeah. That's so witty. Wallpaper to Woodstock. That might be the title of this one. Oh, boy. It's, uh, well, just like... That thing over, like, oh yeah, can you be like pleasantly not being noticed back there? To like, everyone's gonna be looking now at you. It's a show. show. Oh yeah, it's, it's a, gonna be all like we're naming big it after sound a system. famous concert. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Boy. no pressure, right? So she pulled together a band. Um, she asked if I minded if I went from bass to vocals, and she got a different bass player. And I was like, dude, whatever you feel like you need to do. Especially since it went from like I think from three hours to four hours, mm. and with two weeks notice, and I've got lots of stuff going on. I was like, yeah. That's it's gonna be a better show. It's gonna be a lot less stress for me than trying to plan that on base. So she got um, Jeff. I oh. forget his last name, but Jeff was great, a really great bass player. Oh, I can't remember his name. Um, he had think. a Diego bass. It was like a '60s, like an oh. actual '60s. I've never seen one before, but it was. Uh, I'm not sure I know Jeff. That uh, I'd like to though. I like knowing bass we'll players. We'll find <laughs> out his last name. He was a great guy, um, cool bass player. So anyway, and then uh, it was Ryan Elwood on drums. Yeah. And you on guitar. Right. Oh, and cool. me as second vocalist. Background vocals and then some leads. Yeah. And we didn't have any rehearsal. And uh, we had the song list five five or six days yep. ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> and it went great. Nice. It went just great. Yeah. And I'm with you. I love gigs. I, I, it, maybe it's just been happening the last few weeks. And, and maybe it's a reaction to the Petty Nicks thing being like, such a well-oiled machine. I've been enjoying gigs where you really don't know how it's going to go. You've really got to listen. You're on your toes. You're like switching stuff up. I vastly overprepared for the gigs. So like I knew all these solos note for note. And then we like got into playing some of the songs and we're like, Oh, we threw the form out the window. So we're not doing the solo and, or, <laughs> or, or just the feel is so different. I can't even like wedge the actual, whatever in yeah but but props it was to you for being over prepared because that's like anyway, go ahead i, 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 I want to <laughs> go on a tangent about being prepared for gigs but it was sort of more fun to like feel out the like feel and like oh that's where we're putting the uh that's where the groove is mm-hmm. that's and that's not maybe where the groove is on the record but like once we got four bars into the song it's pretty clear we're putting the here's where the down is mm-hmm. or whatever and um yeah, so that was a great, that was a fun gig. Friday yeah. we did. That was the Louisville fun, free school fundraiser with Dave Stas, sponsored by Keen Mortgage, Dave yeah, Stasney's company. Dave Stasney's company. Um, so that was us uh, playing first and then Journey to the Heart playing second. Yeah. And unfortunately the weather having changed 
they oh, took weather us that this weekend Friday was or Saturday. That was, it, it was Friday, Friday and so okay, they took yeah. us. So it was the first day that it got their, cold and rainy. Yeah, I was playing yeah. outdoors Saturday night, so I feel yeah. like it was. Yeah, we brutal. were covered, yeah, but it was a yeah. little chilly. And but I think we played well from bass perspective. I I played well most of the show, but I had a total brain freeze on the first song, like. I looked at the bass and it was like a foreign, like, I was oh, like, yeah. I don't know where this song <laughs> yeah. lives on the bass. I was like, I'm looking at my iPad. I'm like, and then you just like get this panic moment where like, yeah. I'm, I can look at the numbers on my chart and be like, and the, and the key and be like, but I don't know where that is on the bass. And it's just like, oh, it took me like a verse and part of a chorus to get myself together. Yeah, that'll happen. That'll happen. <sighs> I always feel like the best, I feel like the best thing to do in, in that situation is pick a spot that you know is enough time ahead uh, that you you can recover and then just just jump lay in out. then <laughs> yeah lay out until then and that's just, mm, there is a saying that's a great tip. when in doubt yeah. lay out uh, it's not wrong tip. and like definitely like when you're I feel like when you're when I when I'm flustered the worst thing for me to do is to try and interject the thing that I missed two bars back <laughs> right because right. I've been freaking out for two bars <laughs> the best thing for me to do is to be like. I'm going to give myself 15 seconds or 30 seconds, however right. many bars. Right. Yeah. And then I'm going to jump back in. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. And, and, and you know what? I've never thought about it, but I do the same thing okay. when I it's bet. possible. Yeah. You know, um, I'm just going like, I don't know what's happening. Let me, I'm just going to just try to come in back in on the chorus and I'll spend okay. the first trying to remember what's happening in the chorus. You And you probably did a version of that ultimately. Like I mean, you, I, I, I was in, playing right? real quiet. Justin didn't know I did anything wrong because I was, I there knew I was go. off. Yeah. So I was playing very quietly and I was like, that's not the note. That's not the note either. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only thing you did wrong was tell him after he yeah. made, made my <laughs> never have known. <laughs> that's totally. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny though, on the way there we were talking and I, I'm, I'm still more nervous to go do bass gigs than to go sing. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause I've been, I mean, I've done maybe a thousand times more singing gigs than bass gigs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You and have done a lot of bass gigs, but but it's you're yeah, just not the same. Yeah, I mean, I've probably same. done a hundred bass well, gigs. And your toolkit of how to get out of things or deal with problems on vocals is so much. Well, there's less bigger. pressure on the vocals. Well, you know that's, that's the thing. Too. Like, yeah. I feel so like greater response, bass. Bass is greater the responsibility. Most yeah, yeah. And so and we were talking about that. Like, I it's not just the lack of experience, the relative lack of experience. It's it's that I feel, I feel so responsible. Yeah. On bass. I yeah. Um, I, I know years ago when I lived in Jacksonville, I did a lot of bass fill in gigs. That was just, yeah, I started saying I would take them. Not that I'm even a good bass player, but I started saying I would take them. And so I started getting called all the time for that. And it was so interesting playing bass because as a guitar player, nothing you do as a guitar player is going to clear a dance floor, but as a yeah. bass player <laughs> <laughs> or make the whole band go. <laughs> exactly exactly like swivel around like yeah. what and just the level of like as a guitar player i can zone out a lot where it's i'm sort of floating through the music which i love i mean that's it's your job I, right yeah. that's why i yeah. love kind of living yeah. it's like floating through it with bass man you got to be like on it and it was when i first started doing a lot of gigs on bass i was like wow this is like mm -hmm. that's a job you know? Yeah, I thought it was easier than guitar at first because I was like, oh, only one note at a time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I often say like the mechanics of playing the bass are probably easier than playing guitar, but the role of being a bassist is yeah, probably right. harder. Yeah. 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 Like because you're the one everyone is listening to so that they don't screw up or get yeah. lost. Right. So that's like, you probably felt like you're like the bottom card in the house of cards. Yes. Right? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So you said you were, you were going to go off on a tangent about being prepared for gigs. Oh. I'll let you go. Uh, we'll wait. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that it's, you were saying wildly overprepared, knowing all the solos note for note and stuff. And I have, it's something that my teachers told me and that I've really come to appreciate being out and gigging for a while now is that the best thing you can do on a gig is not be like an incredible shredder necessarily or even necessarily be a fun person, although that's important. Yeah. The best yeah, thing you can do is. is just be prepared for whatever the gig is. Mm -hmm. And that will keep you, uh, work, you know, if you're trying to work, that's very important. If you're trying to have people be happy with you, it's very important. And right. <laughs> it's really just a, a sign of respect and a, a good thing for everybody. Right. And it, Often it does not require a huge time investment 
just to do that. Just make sure you know the form on every song or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, a few hours of homework will just yield or minutes even will just yield such a better gig for you and everybody. And on bass, the pressure, like I said, it's especially acute on bass, I think, and maybe drums as well Mm -hmm. of like, because a drummer, right. a drummer who is just playing a beat the whole time versus one who shapes the song and the form of the song. Oh, yeah. It's oh, night and day. Is so good at oh, it. He yeah. is, yeah. He's, yeah, he right. is. I love playing with He's him. He's a really yeah. musical drummer. Like, yeah. And I've seen him prepare. I've seen him, like, make yeah, charts. Yeah, yeah totally. You know? He does. Um, um, yeah. We couldn't do a lot of the showcase stuff that we do without a guy like Elwood. Who, yeah. Who's, mm-hmm. He's on charts. He knows exactly how it's going to go. You know, um, yeah, I you know, I did an interesting thing. Speaking of this week, I prepared for this gig differently than I normally do, partially because a lot of it was classic Rocky type stuff, which I grew up more in that world. Um, so a lot of it was like, not that I knew the songs, but like I'd heard them on the radio forever. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but instead of my normal process is I sit down first and go through song by song and make out charts. And this time I did the opposite where all week I was just putting on the playlist or whatever and just playing through stuff. And then the day before the gig, I sat down and made charts. That sounds nice. And in a weird way, it worked better because it was like I knew so much better what I needed to put on the chart to remember, like, what's the thing I keep missing? Where's the stop I keep missing? My chart might just be don't forget to stop here or solo is after the second chorus or just these. Cause other than that, I've kind of been playing it every night for a week. I I basically know it. I'm just using my chart for the big reminders rather than charting it out. And then just basically doing the gig reading. Um, it was kind of like, which, Mm, which I often do. Right. But this time I kind of did it the opposite. I just kind of lived in the songs for, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we got the set list kind of short notice, but so I didn't have that much time, but, um, but I like that. You know, I'm learning the next song for Cody that way. Um, some somebody to love, Jefferson Airplane. Mm, nice. Um, so it's a, oh, it's a for cool the E Town Hall thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you oh, know, I learned in Boulder. All of, yeah, yeah, I like that venue. It's I've cool. never yeah, been there. Awesome That's a cool spot. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so I learned all of Cody's stuff at first from literal sheet music, not even charts. Like no no for note sheet music. Adam Ravel made it made a lot of oh. it. So. And yeah, he, he made like though. literally like notated bass. Yeah. All, like, <laughs> yeah. The bass line written out. Adam so, is the best. I've played a bunch with Adam and I, well, I, I love, love Adam. Yeah, yeah. So that gig that got canceled, it was going to be Jacob singing Adam on oh, keys. Oh, that's right. I heard it was, oh was going to be an awesome yeah. band. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so, so. Yeah. What a yeah. bummer. Um, anyway, so I, yeah. I learned all of Cody's music, like note for note from sheet music. Then I made charts. So I was working off charts. And so the first gig we did at Soil Dove, I, I was reading sheet music. Right. The second gig, I was on charts. And it's taken me a long time to get off charts on, in that band because I'm used to playing off charts with, with him. Right. Like, mm-hmm. um, and, but these last two gigs this weekend were the first ones where I, w- I had everything memorized, basically. I, I mean, I, I had the charts there in case I needed to remember a key or get, like, I can't get the song in my head. What's the groove? Or do I start? Yeah. You know? But once we started every song, I was off chart. So that was, that was a step forward. That's weekend. awesome. And we yeah. could talk about the gig we did Sunday, which was uh, oh, yeah. super early. Oh. It was, was it like a church thing, or no? It was the uh, memorial. Oh, oh, that's right. You were, yeah, you were I told you about, about it. During yeah, the yeah. Oh man. Um, man, yeah. Go ahead, please. And it, well, it's it, it, your Justin's take on it. You've already heard it from me. Yeah, <laughs> Justin might be a little dark. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> yeah, I can get. I worked on cruise ships. I can get dark. I, I was not. <laughs> you I did. Oh, not, we gotta talk about. Oh, uh, dude, we gotta talk about. It. <laughs> I yeah. I I I'm. I'm I'm not the nicest person in the morning. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and your morning either. extends till about noon. Yeah, right. Before <laughs> noon. Technically, that is the morning. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that's you, a good point. <laughs> Finally, someone is here <laughs> to take my side a little bit. If I didn't have a puppy, I'd probably be doing the same thing, but I, I, I'm my sure schedule has changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's worth it. No, I... I uh, whatever else. The, the most interesting thing was that we were playing at 10 o'clock in the morning outside it's sunny it's all these different things and it was weird how just the change of scenery made all the music seem new like i was thinking so much harder about what comes next Hmm. um and you know not that i not that we've done a ton of gigs with cody and we've done very few rehearsals but some of it i literally wrote and produced with him 
Um, not that that helps me remember it, but like I've definitely been over it a bunch of times. But, but it was like out of its context. It was out of it, context, yeah. and it was hmm. like so much. Like I was there. I would say seventy five, maybe more percent of Cody's sets. I don't need to think because I've done this song with him enough times, and and I've played with him going back to like two thousand fifteen or something, really off and on. But still, I've I've played that song off and on for however many years. Um, so I don't need to think about show me your moves or pick your head up or rap game. Like it's just, it's in there. But at that gig Sunday morning, I was thinking hard about like, what's coming next? What's coming next? Oh my God, what's coming next? Hmm. I don't know. And it was just that it was out of context. It was like, this is just not, I haven't played this show and this music in this context. I didn't know you were having that, tr- that particular trouble. Yeah, that I was sweating. Huh. Yeah, I was, that was really... I mean, dude, although I will give all the props in the world to Cody, the fact that doesn't matter the situation, he brings it 110%. Mm-hmm. He's performing like it's in front of a stadium, no matter what he's actually performing to. He, mm-hmm. I, I've done gigs in, like acoustic gigs in parks with him. I've done this thing we did. That guy hits every single show like it's a stadium show. No matter what's going on in the audience, he's treating it like it's 10,000 people cheering their heads off for him. And, and I give him all the credit in the world because that isn't... I, That's hard. I try to do a version of that personally, and I know how hard it is. And he's, he really does that. Um, Especially like if, if you're not getting the best vibe from the crowd, like you need energy back from the crowd to... Right. Put it out yeah. like yeah. that. I feel uh, that's how I feel. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, but I mean, some people are just trained to be yeah, like killers like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what he is. Yeah. He's, he's kind of a killer. He's yeah. kind of a shark. He's gonna because he's he's toured a lot and he's and all toured that a stuff, time right? like with an, face, yeah, and so, so that's just how he approaches everything. And I was joking when I said they would rather we not be there. It was just an exaggeration, but um, because people did, you know, they were getting into it. It was it was fine. Yeah, there was, were there were some people paying it, attention. It was by, just an outdoor yeah. show where the music wasn't the main thing. Um, uh, and, and, and I think Cody picked up a couple of fans. I did see him, like mm. there were a couple of people that had handfuls of CDs and cards and stuff. So I think, Good. you know, he was right. He converted a few people. Um, I, he's yeah. so real that I think he converts people at every single show. I, I think he does. It's really, you know, but it, you're, you're, it, Nate said, Nate said it, the guy's a killer. He just, he's like, I'm just gonna, like, I haven't met him, but from what, everything you've said, <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know, we, we messaged yeah. a little bit yeah, I wasn't yeah. able to do the gig, but, uh, uh, but yeah, he seems great. And I li- heard the podcast and yeah, yeah. I've heard his set a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we oh, yeah, listened to some recordings. Yeah. 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 And uh, his yeah, personality, right. don't get me wrong. He's goofy and the nicest guy in the world. And when you're not, but like, as soon as he hits stage, like he's going hard. Um, even if it is his kind of goofy, friendly thing, but he's doing it all the way. We've talked before. He is the best. I think officially now he's the best stage talker I've been around. He can talk way longer than you should be able to talk in between songs. Like, yep. and people are fine with it and they're enjoying it. And you're like, <laughs> you can't talk for three minutes between every <laughs> single song. It's like and, him and Dave Grohl. And that's, <laughs> yeah, 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 Dave Grohl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's sort of, he, it's not that he's making jokes or being funny, but he's almost like a stand up where he just like really tunes into the audience mm-hmm. and he's really got the energy going back and forth with him. And that's, I think where he can kind of stretch and go. And you know, the show recently has been a lot dancier and we're slamming songs together, but, but when he needs to talk, he can just, pull something out of the audience and just keep it going. It's, it's fun. Um, yeah. And then anything else from this week? Let's see. We talked about the Louisville gig and then, and then, um, well, I wanted to mention uh, journey to the heart. We, I mean, I mentioned journey to the heart briefly that they yeah. played, but it was really great to see Sonia lay and Ryan smiley and Scott Rogers, Dave, on Dave drums, Stasny, and, and Dave Stasny, and, and Dave, Dave on, on drums. drums. Um, and there was a new bass player in Journey to the Heart, uh, Greg. I, I think didn't, was his name. I didn't get to meet him. I felt bad. And then the keyboard player slash rhythm guitar. I, I didn't catch his name. I think. I I know his name. Oh. Taggart is his last name. Okay. Anyway. Him. Anyway. It just the singers in that band are so good. Oh, they're phenomenal. The two female vocalists. They're yeah. just. Freaking amazing. And the coolest thing uh, that I, I learned at that show was, so, so Sonia took lessons from me a few years ago. It was like six, seven years ago because she was losing her voice doing shows. She's really naturally talented. I mean, she was a drummer first, really good at drumming. She's an incredible musician all around. Just Her ear is amazing. But she was losing her voice. So we, she did some lessons with me for maybe a year. 
and she's been doing more singing now and has not lost her voice a single time since then. Oh, so. that's awesome. Yeah. Yay, and she's me. doing the big, yeah. screamy, oh, like, yeah, heart, she's... like... <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> you know, oh, it's a win for her and for you. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, the, uh, I'm sure, great to hear. Yeah. Um, so we, there was that Friday gig, then we had the Saturday gig with Jenny, and we had the Sunday gig with Cody. And, and then now it's today. Now it's today, now and it's I just today. had a bass lesson. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> it was good. I, I, we, this is the first bass lesson we've had in person ever. I know. And we started we, during COVID, or is uh, that really true? I yeah. think so. Yeah, we've done them wow. all online. Yeah, it's so convenient. But it is so. Yeah. But man, there's some stuff that you can only do. Nate ironed out some stuff just like, boom. He was like. Try try a little bit less tension in your left hand. I was like, oh, suddenly I can move quickly. Yeah. That's the fastest I've ever played that lick. I was like, thanks. <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs> no, it's it's, like, it's just you 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 probably taught more lessons than I have, but um, it is such a cool thing when you are just saying you're kind of doing the thing you usually do, and it just hits the person at the right way at the right time, mm-hmm. and that's like it makes you want to keep doing it, you know. It's like a cool moment. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's do, let's do our, our takeaways. I'm trying to make, oh, yeah. I'm trying to make takeaways a thing. What are our yeah, takeaways? Yeah. Yeah. So that there's some vegetables in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's good. Well, we've had a few scattered throughout. Yeah. Um, well, I've got the takeaway of if I'm, if I'm having a brain freeze on base, I need to look ahead, figure out where I'm going to come back in that I can like take a breath and I'm going to remember that too. That's, that's a good that's one. That's a great one. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I'm going to try to do the doing charts backwards thing next mm. time we have a showcase where I'm just going to try spending more oh. time just playing through the music, jamming the music, getting it more mm-hmm. in my hands than in my head, mm-hmm. and then making the charts for the stuff that I just kind of keep forgetting. Mm-hmm. I like that too. I'm going to use that. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. On, we'll see if I'm allowed to use crunch, it. Depends on the time crunch, right? Like, <laughs> it totally depends on the like, time crunch. Sometimes I'm in a situation w- like I was uh, when we swapped out Megan for John, where I'm like, I have to write out charts because as fast as possible before sound check or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, if you have the time, that's by definitely the best yeah way to do it. Like it's organic and it's in your ear and it's in yeah. you yeah, know, it's right. part of you, and then you like make it formal, yeah. right? Because it is yeah. hard. Reading, I mean, there's certainly no performing. I mean, you can right. perform a little bit while you're watching your chart, but you know, but it's barely because, like, than, the moment for me, the moment my eyes go off the chart, then I'm like, uh, when I go back down, it, I'm like, where is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Nate, what's your takeaway for the week? Mm, my takeaway for the week, um, I liked what you said where you, you were talking about Cody about being able to bring it no matter what the audience is giving you or not is like, was like how I interpreted that of like, yeah, it was weird. It was in the morning, it, like the event, it was like a nine 11 memorial event. Right. Right. And so, so like him bringing his thing, I, that would get in my head of like, do they even want me here? Like, what do I do? What do I do? But just that commitment to giving it your all regardless of the context right. is like such a admirable thing. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I could stand to do a little we, more. We of, could all stand <laughs> as, as a side man. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> You know, like I would just be playing. I'll yeah. be like, I'm just not feeling it. I just got to do my job. my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah or yeah. whatever. It, yeah. But then, just the idea of being like, well, I'm just gonna crush it for me. You know, and yeah. they can take it or leave it. Yeah, mm. that that's a great take. I I knew something profound was coming from you, man. Uh, <laughs> well, I also okay, I was waiting for it. I'd, I'd be like... I'd be remiss if I if I didn't just say like, I, I really enjoyed listening to the podcast. Not just because it's like a hangout, but also because, like you were saying earlier, like oh maybe I care too much, or I, you didn't say it that way, but you were saying like a wedding gig, like I'll just it'll just be in my head about how well it went or didn't right. go. But like for me, I do get jaded sometimes, and listening to people who care about music as much as you guys do is oh, really gosh. inspiring. <laughs> it like reignites the flame a little bit. It's like other people really listen and really care. Good. Like uh, that means I can keep doing it, you know, cause oh my God. sometimes That's you rad, get, man. sometimes you're just like, it, like I wanted to do this professionally and I'm doing it professionally and now it's kind of a grind and sometimes it, it gets in my head and then it's whenever I can like go to a great show or hang out with friends who really care about it or listen to people who really care about it and talk about caring about it. Like 
set list construction and <laughs> the energy of the crowd and all the things you guys discuss. It, it oh. it's landing. So, oh my gosh, you made yeah. me feel so happy. I know, like, yeah. getting a little red. <laughs> well, <laughs> good. <laughs> you should be proud of your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's so nice, man. Uh, it's well, good you're uh, crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be working with you more as time goes on. You know, you're doing our next showcase. And yeah, hopefully, I'm excited. Hopefully uh, all the ones after that. And, you know, maybe there are other ways that we can keep working together. It's always a but pleasure. Fun. And, yeah, I'm excited. I was saying I'm excited. The last showcase we did was, like, in 2018, and there were, like, five people singing. <laughs> and now, you, oh. <laughs> now you're doing, like, 40 tunes. And yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. Let's make some charts. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. make some charts. <laughs> Yeah. She does a great I'm, job, so well, you won't have to I'm, do too I'm yet. like, I might be handing that over. <laughs> we'll see. I see. I see. We'll see. Uh, anyway, we should probably wrap. This is a, this is a long one. This great long, stuff, though. No, you know. we're not. No editing. Just <laughs> no, throw it out. This was, I might this was not, a great conversation. Yeah, I don't really think there's was. very much yeah. to edit. There might be a couple levels to edit, but yeah, not much. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't get many ums. You that. did not do many ums tonight. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about it. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can improve. You can and, think about something and get better. And you didn't even have to edit all those ums to get like the the uh, punishment for for it. Like I'm an, I'm an, I'm admiring oh. you for making that change well, now you're making me without wish going through more of them. <laughs> Yeah, uh, congratulations, you guys. Uh, <laughs> let's. Um, I'm leaving those in. Wrap. Okay, let's wrap. Right. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you guys. Thank you, Nate. See you next week.